Hello, welcome back to Strawberry Jam. Uh, by the time I upload this video, I would have finished the intermediate lobby. Just, I would have just finished the intermediate lobby. Uh, so by demand, I'm going to be looking through the library. We'll see what interesting things we can find here because I, I know we'll be able to learn stuff from this. So yeah, okay. So let's start off with the simple stuff here. Each of these um, are different sections teach you about different mechanics of the game. Uh, which may or may not be something that is necessarily meant to be, you know, known by the average player. But each each section here is labeled with a symbol, which denotes the sort of difficulty where that information will be relevant. So I believe the circular ones that are blue, the circular ones that are blue are going to be uh, the beginner, the beginner ones. The yellow ones are intermediate. The red ones, the, the red triangles are advanced, and this hourglass looking symbol is for expert. And also, each, yeah, you can see the colors here match up. Oh, sorry, red is intermediate, yellow is advanced, okay. Right, so this will be intermediate, um, this frames thing will be advanced. Alright, so let's take a look. I think I've done this before, but we're gonna go through all of them right now. Many of the explanations in gyms and library reference speed. Speed is measured in pixels per second, for example, 240 pixels per second is the speed of a dash, various modes of movement and their corresponding speeds are shown to the right. Number above shows your horizontal speed. Right, so when I'm walking, my horizontal speed is 90, and obviously when I stop, it's zero. And I think it doesn't matter which direction I'm walking in, or if I fall or not, my horizontal speed will be 90. Obviously my, uh, my actual speed will not be 90, uh, because I'll be moving diagonally, but my horizontal speed will be 90. Anyway, a wall jump is 130 speed, and a diagonal dash has a speed of 169.71. Nice. It marks here as 170 because it rounds up, I assume. So that's very interesting. I believe this diagonal dash would be uh, sort of a some Pythagorean theorem kind of thing. Actually, if your dash upwards is also 240, oh, it doesn't say because it's only horizontal speed. Right, so this only marks my horizontal speed, which is apparently 169.71. Right, so any dash gives you a speed of 240, unless of course it's a diagonal or an upward dash, which is not marked here. Alright, bubbles are also a speed of 240, which makes sense. And a hyper, which you can see here is marked with the intermediate symbol, has a speed of 325. I don't know if it's easy to see here, but... Alright, I think my uh, super speed would be. Uh, I I don't I can't really tell what the number is, but yeah, you can see we dip. Uh, we go past the three hundred when we hyper. So yeah, that is about speed, and we'll be using that. Uh, we'll be referencing speed a lot throughout the rest of the explanations. Alright, so let's keep going. I think I'll go down the columns. So frames is next. Many of the explanations in the gyms and library reference frames. A frame is the smallest unit of time calculated by the game, equal to 1 60th of a second. In this example, times when the red bubbles start moving and when refills are collected correspond to the number of frames above. Right, so... Jeez. Uh, so for example, this one takes me 20 frames to get to the pink crystal. And uh, as for the rest, this takes me 15 frames. This is 5 frames. And this is uh, 0 frames. Oh no, sorry, this, this is 5 frames. Above will be 10 frames. Right, um, I wonder if the grid lines are actually aligned for that. It doesn't really look like it. Because see, this grid line is in the middle of... Uh, this this red line is in the middle of two lines, two grid lines here. And this one is uh, on a grid line. And I assume those two red lines calculate 5 frames. And then it, it looks kind of close where... It, it almost looks as if every interval is like two and a half grid lines worth, but uh, you know, grid spaces worth. But I don't know if that's an accurate way to do it. I feel like maybe this grid line background is really just for decorative purposes anyway. So, yeah. Alright, expert, expert tough stuff here. All movement in the game inside the frames. From one frame to the next, your position is moved by a certain amount in pixels, uh, and you're not considered to have been present in between those positions. I see. As a result, it is possible to clip through objects and hazards without interacting with them at sufficiently high speeds. Note that this does not apply to solid tiles as their collision checks are more robust. This can make certain moves impossible at high speeds as there are no frames where you are in the correct position to perform the move. 
<laughs> this is known as getting zero framed. Hitting the bubble to the right allows you to clip through the spikes. Also, the Kevin block you instantly rebound to the left and thus do not tie to the spikes. Right, because, um, what is the bubble speed again? 240, right? The bubble speed is 240, and therefore, because you are moving at 160, uh, uh, 240 fr uh, pixels per frame, and because your game is calculated at 160th of a frame, every uh, unit that they calculate will move you 4 frames forward. And so, if you work it out right, you actually get to move. Uh, you know, 4 frames worth uh, of distance before collision checks occur for spikes. So I can touch the spikes here. I can activate the Kevin block without even hitting the spikes. So yeah, interesting. Okay, let's keep going. Hitboxes. Whoa. Alright, hitboxes. Hitboxes are shapes, often rectangles, used to calculate the collision of game objects. Madeline has two hitboxes, the taller one in red floors, so the one that's right beside me, collides with floors, walls, and ceilings. The shorter one in green collides with hazards and other objects like bubbles, and is known as a hurt box. It's slightly small, which is why you can sometimes see her feet like sort of glide past spikes or past bubbles, and it's known as a hurt box. Both hitboxes are small and sprite, so as to uh, more easily avoid dying to hazards and crashing the ceilings. Which sort of makes sense. I think like a bunch of games do that. I don't know if like the, the Bullet Hell series really likes to make their projectiles much bigger than hitboxes. Since the hitbox is shorter, the bottom of Madeline can collide with solids without colliding with hazards. Right. This allows for techniques such as corner jumps and spiked corner boosts. Dang. Okay. No idea what those mean, but yes. Alright. Got more here. When you, are, when you crouch, both hitboxes decrease in height. You can fit through one tile high gaps and go through smaller gaps between hazards. Oh, that's it, okay. Cool. Uh, most hazards have hitboxes smaller than their sprites, so the player can more easily avoid them. As a result, the player can sometimes appear to be inside hazards without dying. Uh, the tips of spikes are not hazardous. Furthermore, the spikes do not kill you if- you wait, sorry. The tips of spikes are not hazardous? What? Oh, the tips as in like, the, 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 the smaller one pixel point over there. Those won't kill you, so you can sort of touch them. Yeah, I see. Uh, spikes do not kill you if you're moving in the same direction as the points. So here they're, they're pointing upwards, so I can move upwards without dying to them. I can move rightwards here. And I can sort of touch this. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I think it will be demonstrated better in here. Where I can touch the tips of the spikes here. Because the tips un uh, don't have hitboxes associated with them. I don't know what this is about. Can I align myself to actually sort of glide past the spikes here? Yeah, sort of like that. Okay. Crystal spinners are exactly two tiles wide, but are less than two tiles tall. Therefore, on-grid spinner columns actually have a small gap which is the same height as Madeline's crouching hurt box. What? Oh, like the one right beside me on my left. That one has the same height protruding out of the... Um, out of the ground as my crouching hurt box. When spinners are close but not touching, the game will fill in space between the pixels with the same color as the spinners, which is all the way on my far right there. These pixels are commonly known as spinner juice, and they are not hazardous. <laughs> spinner juice. Alright, so yeah. Here... I can walk under here because my hurt box is not high enough to hit this. And here I can walk through these because again my hurt box is not high enough. Nice. Can I? Okay, I don't know how I can align myself with you, but okay. The hitbox of one tower of electricity is one pixel smaller than on each side. What? Sorry. The hitbox of one tower of electricity is one pixel smaller than on each side of the rectangular sprite. The walls and floors that overlap with electricity are safe to stand on. Right, so this ceiling over here, even though it looks like the electricity is going over it, I can touch easily. Firstly, because of my hurt box, and secondly, because, um, you know, the uh, the hitbox for the electricity is a lot smaller than it seems, so I can grab the wall over here without much problem. Can I walk through? You? No, I cannot. All right, got trolled there. Probably do a, a a duck dash, but all right, there is there is like um, you can do a duck dash over here. Uh, there are actually advanced options for the configurations that you can set up. So like down here, yeah. 
So I once you can do a quick restart and a crouch dash, which I um set to P over here. So if I just press P, I perform a dash while crouching. And I think the manual way to do it is involving you crouching first and then dashing while pressing another direction really fast. But you know, I can't do that right now. Oh just kidding, I did it. <laughs> oh does does regular dashing just do it? No, wow, I actually did it. I actually managed to do a crouch dash. Nice. The easy way is just to press P and then it does it for you. So yeah. Oh wow. Wait, look at that. I land on the ground beside the electricity. Interesting. Cool, cool. Many game objects have hitboxes larger than their sprites so the player can more easily reach them. Oh. Right, so... Yeah, this bubble is larger. Well, it looks larger than it actually is, so I can jump and then I'll land in the bubble. Cool. Same for this dash crystal. Oh, whoa. Right, I see. Wait, what is it supposed to show me again? Um... Show me I can I can sort of like... Sort of slightly touch it without having to go through and hit the spikes. Alright, I get it. Holdable objects have two hitboxes. The larger hitbox is in the area in which the player can grab the objects. So I can grab the object from a larger area. The small hitbox collides with solids and seeker barriers in case of jellies. However, when you grab the object, the small hitbox ignores collision with solids, although they will still collide with barriers. Right, so I can grab from here, right? Yes. And your collision kind of just goes away. Yeah, so you can you can do this funny kind of thing. Although it will, yeah, although it will still um, collide with um, this barrier over here. I can also grab you from here, right? Yeah. That's really interesting. Nice. Okay. Uh, now we have Theo, which I can also grab through the floor. And also, you have basically zero hitbox for me. Alright, and you- okay, those, those are Seeker Barriers, so they don't actually interact with Theo. Cool. Alright, this is a long section. Oh, just kidding, we're done. The large hitboxes of a spring allows the player to hit- uh, hit it while moving past the corner of a wall? Take the bubble outright because you hit the spring. Right, yeah, I've seen this happen before. So... Yeah, this is, the spring is actually- uh, it actually- the hit- The area in which you hit the spring is actually bigger than it looks to be. Yeah. So like, a lot of times you can also sort of hit the spring while not actually really touching it from the side. That's, that was a lot less- uh, a lot less obvious, but yeah. Okay. So that's about hitboxes. And we have friction. Okay. Friction reduces the horizontal speed at a constant deceleration. To demonstrate this, dash through the modified dream block without jumping out of it. If you hold right, you will decelerate slowly until you reach normal walking speed at point uh, at 4.3 speed for, per frame. So, yeah, we're talking about acceleration here, which um, in physics is calculated by basically the change in speed per unit time. So because speed is distance per unit time, it's more like a change of change of distance per unit time. And so the the I guess the the unit for acceleration here would be pixels per frame per frame or pixels per frame squared. If you do not hold right, air friction will be higher and you will decelerate more quickly until you reach zero speed at 1.8 speed per frame. So let's hold right here and I go much further. But if I hold nothing, yeah, I will not go very far at all. Interesting. Can I hold right? Are you going to do this? No, okay. You just. Show me what happens if I don't hold right. What happens if I hold the other direction? Okay, it's still the same actually, look at that. I actually hit the second grid line even though I hold left. Which is the same as holding nothing. So that's interesting. Alright, what about here? Friction is high on the ground and in the air, as expected. To demonstrate this, dash with the modified dream block and slide on the ground. Ground friction is the smallest if you hold right but it's slightly larger than air friction when holding right, at 6.7 speed per frame. Ground deceleration is slightly larger if you hold down, regardless of whether you hold right or not, at 8.3 per frame. Ground deceleration is larger if you don't hold right or hold left while sliding at 16.7. Alright, so the slowest one if I don't hold anything. I hit the second grid line. If I hold down, I actually hit the fourth grid line. That's really unintuitive. Holding down apparently gives you less friction than not holding anything. And I wonder why. Isn't isn't there a greater amount of her touching the ground? Okay, well, uh, either way, holding right 
probably leads me to the fifth grid line before reaching horizontal speed. I can't actually be entirely sure because I don't know when she uh, slows down to walking speed. So yeah. Alright, that was friction. Not a very hard section to comprehend. Uh, I don't know how useful this will be um, in game itself, but I, I assume it has a lot to do with when you kind of do a lot of crouch jumping and stuff. So I can like, I can crouch jump and like kind of slide into little places. Yeah. Okay, next, input buffering. This is advanced tech. Input buffering is a leniency mechanic designed to make the game feel like it doesn't unfairly eat inputs. It is possible to press buttons slightly early and still retrieve, oh sorry, receive the desired behavior from the input. Yeah, that's why I always uh, realize that you can sort of press dash before actually hitting the crystal and you will still dash. So I guess it's because of input buffering. Uh, for example, it is possible to press and hold jump slightly before touching the ground and the player will still jump upon landing. So like, um, the playback is doing over there is sort of jumping out of the water before hitting the spikes. The standard buffer is 5 frames for all moves. Freeze frames do not consume buffer frames. Yeah, and freeze frames is something I assume I don't know yet. That means that if the jump button is pressed no more than 5 frames before touching the ground, you will still jump. Buffering is often used to make extremely precise moves, even frame perfect moves, more lenient. Yeah, it gives you 5 frames of leniency. In this example, you must buffer a jump off the, spike, uh, off the surface of the water before seeing into the spikes. So if I press jump earlier than when I land, I will jump off like that. Nice. And it's actually, yeah, it's actually not that, it's actually not that strict at all. Wow. What, if I, what happens if I hit the, okay, it's a lot harder to actually hit the, oh no, I can. Wow, I can actually hit the top of the spike and still manage to uh, water off. I think it's because the spikes just have um, sort of a smaller hitbox than they appear to have. Dashes can also be buffered before touching the ground or refill if you don't have a dash. That is what I was talking about. In this example, consume a dash before falling into the refill. Buffering a rightward dash when collecting the refill allows you to dash through the tight spinner gap. So I dash first to lose my dash. Then I dash um, earlier than I collect the crystal. So I um, you know, manage to dash into the pixel perfect. Yeah, like that. I have to hold grab, obviously. Like this. Nice. Wow. I want to try that again. No, that was too early of a dash. Okay, so that, that is very consistent, at least when I try it. Okay, we're at, uh, whoa. We're approaching expert tech now. Actually, I actually haven't played any expert before. Buffered climb jumps can be used to climb objects without activating them. Only the jump needs to be buffered. The grab button can be held the entire time. In this, uh, in this example, climb on top of the core block. Climb, oh my goodness. Climb on top of the core block without activating it using buffered climb jumps. So if I just hold grab, and I just keep jumping. Oh, I actually don't activate it. Wow. I didn't know that was a thing. Interesting. I think, I think it's because I jump, I, I buffer my jump, which causes the jump to occur the moment I have an opportunity to, which happens before I actually grab. So that's cool. Since springs refill your dash, you can buffer a dash after hitting a spring, which is known as a buffered spring cancel. You can buffer a dash after hitting a spring. So in this example, dash up into the spring and buffer a right dash. Interesting, alright. So I need to dash basically right before hitting the spring. Interesting, how do I... Wow, you can do that! And if you don't, you just get bounced upwards into the spikes. Very cool, I didn't know this was a thing. Wow. Yeah, I can even do that, whatever I was doing before. Cool. In this example, we'll take the bubble to the right and buffer a vertical dash. This should cause you to dash through the pixel perfect gap consistently. Note that this setup does not work at significantly different game speeds as the length of a dash differs slightly. What? So... Wait, so I'm supposed to dash up basically immediately? Hmm. Interesting, I don't know. Uh, okay, I think I have to dash later then. Like that, wow. I think that's because this 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 uh, position over here is the earliest in which you can dash out of a bubble, which causes it to be so that if you try and dash out of the bubble, right, the only time where it can happen is over here. 
And obviously I have to do it slightly earlier than I am doing it. Or slightly later, it has to be within 5 frames. Yeah, okay this is a lot harder for me to do then. Wow. I think I'm pressing too early. There you go. That is quite tough. Next, if you are oh, if you are moving horizontally through a dream block, buffering a dash out of it causes you to dash 4 pixels away from it. Buffer an upward dash while it's in a dream block, this should cause you to fit to the perf pixel perfect gap. Okay. So... There you go. Alright, so I just have to buffer a dash out of the dream block and I will naturally be positioned to fit through this. Cool. Okay. Uh, input buffering. I don't know how- I don't know how I would feel about this, uh, this- this mechanic, but okay. Jump control. Jumping off the ground gives you a constant upward speed of for 12 frames before you start accelerating downwards. However, if you release the jump button during this period, you'll start accelerating downwards immediately. This is a shorter jump than normal full height jump, right? So normally a full height goes all the way up to like this little um, ceiling over here. But to get past it, I need a small jump, so I just- I just barely tap the jump button. Cool. Oh, okay. Oh no. Other types of jumps can be shot by releasing the jump button as well. This is most commonly seen with controlled hypers. But when I send a hyper or wave dash and release the jump button soon afterwards. Right, this this tech. And I do know how to do this. Only because uh I'm already halfway through the advanced, so they did teach they did teach um, bunny hops, which require this kind of thing. Okay. Can I please? <laughs> yeah, this is okay, um this is one tech that I do have a lot of trouble with. This bunny hop kind of hyper. But alright, finally, whoa, Grandmaster Tech. The standard acceleration gravity uh, the standard acceleration due to gravity is 15 speed per frame. If the player speed is between minus 40 and plus 40, uh, and I assume minus and plus refer to different directions, holding this holding jump cuts this value in half to 7.5 speed per frame. This makes jumps feel floatier at the top and can be abused to use a to do a long distance jump called a float jump. Quickly release and repress the jump button after jumping. Wow! So I can f I can f I can slow fall here, sort of. Uh, okay. No, that was. I need to repress. Oh wow! Yeah, I do feel a little floaty. Look at that. Wow. That's really cool. I just need to be able to. To to line this up. Jeez, okay, this is actually kind of tough. How? Yeah, what? How do you make that? Do I have to jump later? No, because the later I jump... The later I jump, the closer I am to the spikes. That's kind of close, but I don't know if that's it. Do I have to make it... I have to press the space bars closer together. Not really. The, but too high of a jump. Yeah, it doesn't work. It has to be. A, it has to be a minimum jump, I think. I think I just have to somehow jump very close to the spike. Alright, well I'm gonna assume that I this happens, but I think I've got it like once before, but I don't remember how to get it ever again. Oh no. <laughs> alright, alright, I give up. I'm not doing this. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna you know. There we go. Cool. Okay, next up, crouching. Uh if you hold down while on the ground you enter a crouch state, this allows to fit through smaller gaps. Your hitbox is reduced from 11 pixels to- Oh, I- I realize now that electricity thing that I did before uh, was more of a duck dash than anything else. Your hitbox is reduced from 11 pixels tall to 6 pixels tall and your hurtbox from 9 to 4. You cannot walk while crouching, but you can dash down diagonal to move while maintaining the crouch state. Okay. So I can do like this. Makes sense. Cool. Alright. 
If you crouch and touch a spring, you'll be launched in the air while crouching. However, you'll immediately uncrouch when you start moving down. There are exceptions if you uh, there are exceptions if you are in Coyote time, which is the only section in the library, or if you are too close to a ceiling. Oh wow! Wait, what? You will not uncrouch even if you are moving down. Right. Let's see. So if I crouch, yeah, I, I uncrouch immediately when I start moving downwards, as you can see here. However, if I'm too close to the ceiling, what happens? Ah, okay. If I'm too close to the ceiling, I will stay crouched until I'm far enough away from the ceiling to uncrouch. Okay, that makes sense. You cannot grab walls while crouching, but you can perform climb jumps. Also see crouch jumps and advanced. Wall jumping while crouched allows you to uncrouch. Really? Um, okay, how do I, how do I? Oh, there it is. Yeah. I sort of stay crouched for a bit there. Um, before I, yeah, before I uncrouch, so I can wall jump off while I'm crouching. Cool. If you are crouching and not dashing, you cannot grab holdable objects. This is important when grabbing jellies after performing ultras. You, uh, ultras. I don't know what an ultra is. You must not perform a crouch jump from the ultra. Yeah, so if I grab if I held grab here and I jumped, I would grab this, right? However, if I do a dash over here, even when holding grab, I will not be able to grab the jelly because I'm crouching. Okay. What is the, what the If you crouch on the ground, you will not be pushed by horizontal wind. This immunity lasts for a few frames after uncrouching. Hence you can move against the wind without dashing by holding forward and quickly alternating between crouching and uncrouching. So I hold forward and I just kind of spam this uncrouching thing. I need to spam a lot, a lot faster though. Really? There you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh wow, that is something. Cancelling a horizontal or down diagonal dash with a ground jump results in either a super or a hyper. However, if the direction of your dash is not checked, Wait, sorry. The direction of your dash is not checked to determine if it's a super or a hyper. If you are crouched, you'll perform a hyper. If you are uncrouched, you'll perform a super. Hypers occur because the down diagonal dash causes you to crouch on the ground before you jump. Oh. So basically, hypers do not occur because you are down diagonal dashing. It is more because you are crouching. So that is how they consider it a hyper. If you are crouching, it's a hyper. If you are not, it's a super. Here, dashing horizontally into the one tower Cause you to crouch, you can then jump out inside the gap. As a result, performing the inputs for a super will instantly give you a hyper. Right, so yeah. Normally dashing horizontally, let me just show you that. Dashing horizontally and then jumping gives you a super, like this. However, if I go through this one tower over here, I'll perform a hyper instead. That's very interesting. I did not expect that that is how they would calculate them. So that's cool. Okay, let's keep going. How much more do we have? Oh, we have a lot more sections to go. Uh, let's talk about Coyote time. So, the Coyote State is a leniency mechanic designed to allow you to jump slightly late when walking off platforms. You can go into Coyote State for 5 frames after walking off a platform. You can jump from mid-air during these frames. This allows you to jump further distances. You can jump across this gap without dashing by exploiting Coyote time. The Coyote State is removed one after jumping, so it's only possible to jump once. I see. So I can sort of jump a bit later than usual. And it has to be even later than that. Like this, yeah. So I, I was, I, you saw me like slightly fall off before jumping. You can also perform hypers and supers during coyote frames. It is possible to dash from the platform and then jump from midair. Coyote frames do not recharge dashes, so hypers and supers will not extend if the six frame recharge. Whoa! If the six frame recharge time is reached after leaving the platform, right? Because apparently you need six frames to recharge your dash. But because Kyrie times do not recharge dashes, you will not get that recharge. Freeze frames do not count towards reducing Kyrie times. I have no idea what freeze frames are, but okay. So if I did a super and I jumped, I need to jump later then. Uh, what? Hmm. How much later do I have to jump? How much later do you jump? Wow, you jumped really late. Wow, I didn't know you could do that. So here, oh, here's basically the same thing, isn't it? It is, so... Wow, you actually get so much 
You actually get so much further off the platform than you are allowed to normally. <laughs> Kyrie frames are also given when standing on disappearing crumble blocks, exiting dream blocks, and holding on to breaking core blocks. This is what makes dream hypers and core hypers possible. So what are you again? Yeah. Okay. So... I do this and then... Wow, I just did a... <laughs> I just did a... Yeah, I just did a dream hyper. Look at that. Can I go back? Can I go back? Um, okay, hold on. Let me just... There you go. Alright, so basically what I did over here is I horizontally dashed. And then immediately after leaving, I did a dream... Hi I did a regular hyper. And I believe because of input buffering, I was able to do with my downward diagonal dash slightly earlier than when I escaped. However, because I did that and then I jumped immediately after leaving the dream block, I did the hyper instead. Nope. That was too... Uh, I don't know if that was it. I don't know if that's it or not. But it's sort of close. Yeah, that was why I did. Uh, okay. Jumping during Coyote frames allow you to perform instant hypers and supers out of bubbles. Wow, interesting. Here, I walk off the ground to the bubble and press dash and jump at the same time to perform a hyper or a super. Really? You must do this very soon after leaving the ground before Coyote frames run out. Oh, okay, so I just walk into the bubble and immediately press dash and jump. You can also dash into the bubble. So, if I just did this, no. Uh, oh, wait, I did it. Wow, you just press them both at the same time. Yeah, wow, I did not know you could do that. That's quite cool. You can also dash into here. Can I do a... No, that's a super. Wait, hold on. Wait, really? Wait, um... No. If I did... Oh no, I can't do a hyper off the bubble. It's like... I can do a, I can do a super, I think. Yeah, but not a hyper. I think uh, input buffering also helps with this one. Yeah, it doesn't let me do it. Yeah, even if I spam, I don't think I could. Okay. So right now, all I know how to do is a instant super out of that. Alright, stamina. Right, this one is the thing that uh, when I did for, when I played my when I oh my goodness when I uh, when I first played through the game, I had a lot of confusions about stamina because with whatever I did, right, it always felt like my stamina was randomly going on and off. But at least now I understand how it works. So your initial climbing stamina is one hundred and ten. It is replenished by touching the ground, obtaining a refill, or interacting with certain objects. Stamina is depleted by grabbing a wall, climbing up, or climb jumping. Wall jumping, neutral jumping, and sliding down a wall, with or without holding grab, do not deplete stamina. So when your stamina reaches 20, you begin to flash red, entering a tired state. In this state, if you are already holding a wall, you can continue holding it. You can climb, jump, and activate certain blocks. You cannot begin holding a wall and cannot pick up holdable objects. I see. When your stamina reaches 0, you are exhausted. You can no longer grab or climb jump, but can activate blocks. Oh wow, I didn't know you could activate blocks even when exhausted. The stamina meter mod is useful for visualizing. Oh, the stamina meter mod is useful for visualizing how much stamina you have left, which I don't have active right now. But yeah, so basically, if I, you know, did this, yeah, my stamina starts going down from twenty, and then I start falling after a bit, and it it is it goes off a lot faster when you're climb jumping, even though if you manage to stagger your climb jumps enough, you can actually get more distance climb jumping than actually climbing. Uh, yeah, and that's why, like, that's why I was so confused about why my stamina was going off randomly. It's because, apparently, this counts as climb jumping. This is a wall jump, this is a climb jump. So yeah. Stamina is consumed at a rate of 10 per second while holding a wall. If you grab a wall without moving, it takes 9 seconds to become tired and 11 to become exhausted. As it makes sense, yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna hold for like 11 seconds here, but I'm gonna just assume that, you know, you over here are doing what is expected. Your climbing speed is 45 pixels per second. It takes 1.98 seconds to climb, uh, of climbing to become tired and 2.42 to become exhausted. Hence, the maximum how you can climb is 13.6 tiles. Lots of numbers going around here. But okay. So I can climb up and then I'll become tired here, and then I'll become exhausted up there. So the red lines sort of indicate 
when I become exhausted or not. Cool. A climb jump uses 25, 27.5 stamina, which is exactly one quarter of the max stamina. It therefore takes four climb jumps to become exhausted. The maximum height you can travel with four climb jumps is 13.4 tiles. Oh, so apparently you can get higher with regular um, climbing. This is slightly less than the maximum height you can climb upwards. However, you can climb jump as long as your stamina isn't completely empty, so you can go higher by climbing a short distance in addition to four climb jumps. Right, so here basically what they did is they, they sort of climb this first before doing the climb jumps. Which, which, um, yeah, because uh, even if you had less than 27.5 stamina here, you could still climb jump. So, yeah, okay. And finally, against wind. When grabbing a wall, downward wind pushes you at 12 pixels per second. Reducing upward climb speed to, 40, to 33. We are at 45? It was 45 per second before, right? Yeah. So, um... Okay. Uh, this is a regular... Vector edition here? Yeah, so there's a upward... Uh, my climbing is an upward vector of 45. The wind is a downward vector of 12. And so the resultant vector will be 33. Oh, I didn't, I didn't expect to die there. But yeah, you can do that. Uh, upward wind does not affect the rate at which you climb, nor does it push you out while grabbing a wall. However, it makes climb jumps more effective. You can make it to the top of this wall with only three climb jumps. Because, uh, yeah, like... It makes you sort of floatier in wind, even though it doesn't actually affect the rate at which you climb. You can climb jump a lot better over here. And you fall slower. Which makes sense. Okay, next. Uh, sorry, what do you call it again? Dash speed, right? Oh, <laughs> what the? The speed of a normal dash is 240, but the horizontal speed of a normal diagonal dash is approximately 169.71. If you start a dash from moving faster than a horizontal speed of the dash, the dash will inherit a faster speed. If you dash while moving faster than the horizontal speed of the dash, so if you have like a speed of height in 240 and then you start dashing, you will dash faster. For up diagonal and diagonal dashes, this speed resets when the dash ends. Interesting. However, when a down diagonal dash ends, your speed is retained. This is important for ultras, which I explained the expert gym. Here, the first dream block gives a burst of speed. Dash immediately after exiting the dream block and observe what happens with the three directions. Yeah, so I get a extreme speed boost when I dash out of the when I dash immediately outside of the dream block. Yeah, and I guess I guess so much speed. Oh my goodness. Can I do like a wave dash here? Not really. <laughs> I can do that though, I don't know what that's about. Hmm. I thought I could wave dash, but no, okay, wave dashing does not make you any faster. But yeah, you can you can do that. It's like... Oh. Okay. Can I do a reverse after that? Oh my, I sort of can. Uh, Alright, finally, Grandmaster Attack. After a dash ends, your horizontal speed will be set to 160 before accelerating. This is uh, this can be used to perform a move known as a failed hyper. Whoa! Dash down into the ground like you would find standard, but input your jump later than usual so it occurs after your dash has ended. Just run a slightly longer jump without giving the speed or lower height of a hyper. Interesting. So I, I saw the jump a bit later than usual. That was too early. So... So that? I guess that's what you did. And I, apparently I could not do that. Apparently I'm not able to do that if I just do a regular jump. Wow, you're right. Okay. Cool. Uh, is it using coyote frames to jump up? I think it might be using coyote frames. Feel wave dashes can be performed in the same way as field hypers. Right. Right, okay. So same thing, basically. Like that. Interesting. I mean, I normally just do filled hypers and filled wave dashes because I cannot do them. But I guess at some point I have to learn how to do how to use them. Okay, objects like dream blocks, Kevin blocks, tempo switches, and breakable blocks 
are interacted with by, what do you call again? By dashing into them. Your dash lasts for 15 frames, but there are 6 frames after your dash ends where you can still interact with these objects. This interval is known as your dash attack, and makes spacing more lenient. Here dash out the entities on the ground, you will enter them during dash attack. Okay. Oh, you're called dash attack, alright. So... Right, I see. So basically... My dash theoretically ends right under the dream block. But because of this thing known as dash attack, I still manage to enter the dream block as a result. Same here. It's a bit hard to tell because it looks like I'm just dashing into you. But yeah, apparently that's how it works. If you collide with a if you collide with a dash activated block during your dash attack period, you can grab or jump or jump off the block without activating it. Here take the bubbles towards the right. The bubbles are spaced so that you will be in the dash attack period when colliding with a cavern and dream block. If you hold grab or buffer a wall jump before colliding, you should not go through the dream block or activate cavern. Right, so as a demonstration, you'll go in the block here because um stuff happens. However, if you grab dash sorry, if you if you hold grab, what am I saying? You'll just grab on the side of the wall without actually entering it. Same here. Even though normally you would actually activate the block. Interesting. And I think I know where this was used in the intermediate lobby. The squaring the circle level had one where you had to hold grab throughout the entire room. And basically it, it allowed you to grab onto Kevin blocks without activating them. And I think this is a technique that was used. So that's cool as well. Alright, I don't know how much more we can do. I don't know how long I've been recording, honestly. 41 minutes. Wow, okay. Uh, alright. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, when you jump off a moving block, its speed is added to yours, giving a block boost. However, block boosts are capped at 130 for upwards and 250 for horizontal. In addition, you cannot gain downwards block boosts. Uh, ground jump starts with 105 upward speed. Jumping on a block moving upwards uh, at 240 speed results in a jump with 105 plus 130 equals through 235. So yeah, again, vector math. A wall jump starts with 130, so jumping off a block horizontally at 300 results in 130 plus 250 is 380. Right, because your maximum is 250 for horizontal movements. It is important to make contact with the block boost before jumping on to receive the block boost. If you wall jump without making full contact, you will not get the block boost if something occurs when buffering the wall jump. Interesting. So a regular is 105, and falling is apparently 160. So yeah, I get 135 as a result. And here, I get what? 350? 350 I think? Or 325, 350. Or whichever it is, I can also do that, which gives me a ton of speed. It gives me like what, 600? Yeah, I think I reached the 600s there. So if, if I could... Yeah. Actually no, I don't reach 350 because I need to wall jump for it to be added on. That's 350. If I just, if I just do this, it's more like 105 for a jump. I think? Oh no, it's 130 for a... Wait, is it 130? No, it's 105 for... I don't know. Oh, we're not done yet. Alright. Up to... Okay. A uh, super has 260 horizontal and 105 upwards. Why a wall bounce has 170 uh, and 160 upward speed. Supering a wall bouncing off the moving block simply adds the block boost just as with normal jumps. Interesting, and then we have a bunch of numbers. It is possible to wall bounce off a moving block without making contact with it, in which case you will not get the block boosts. Interesting. To avoid this, do not buffer the jump input of the wall bounce to ensure you make contact with the block first. A hyper is 1.25 times the horizontal speed and 0.5 the upward speed. Okay, so these are all just numbers. Yep. Okay, so uh, doing a super over here allows you to gain quite a lot of speed actually. Wait, do I have to... There you go, that's how you get there. And you can also 
do this. Whoa, you can also kill yourself, of course. Yeah, wow. Okay. And also you can do a hypers of this kind of thing. Oh, that's what they're teaching you right now. So I can sorta of do this and wall bounce and it it's a it's, it's a wall bounce but it gives you so much um horizontal distance because uh because you are getting pushed out by it as well. So yeah. And then also we have this kind of thing. Uh, I need to jump later. Jump earlier. Yeah, I reached 500. Wow. And I sli- Oh, whoa, wait, what? Yeah, I get, I get like, my momentum is still there. So even if I jump over, I get swung outwards. I get swung past the- I get swung past the block. Interesting. Wow, that's really cool. Okay. And also we have a bunch of other stuff. Alright, I think at this point, I think I'll leave the rest of the library for another episode though. We do have a lot more to go, but yeah, happy that we did all of this right now. So yeah, this is going to be part one of the library. Um, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.